hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're doing some flocking. Well, I know what you guys are thinking and you're thinking that I've done this before, but while it's not unlike me to revamp and modernize or update a show, um, this is a little different today. Now, my normal method of flocking would be to use a color-based adhesive, uh, seal up my wood, use the adhesive, and then take powdered flocking, regardless of the material, put it in an applicator, blast the flocking down onto the wet adhesive, then you let it dry for 12 to 15 hours, then you brush it off, then you have to wait, you have to clean up all the flocking, you can scoop it up, you can put it back in your container, etc, etc, etc. You guys have seen two tutorial videos like that here on my show explaining how to do it and demonstrating it as well. But here's the deal. I had someone contact me on the internet and they are from a company called Spectro Coatings Corporation. And honestly, they offered me the opportunity to try some of their products and what they specialize in this aspect was flocking. So I said, sure, I'd love to give it a try. And so what they did was they sent me some samples to try out here on the show. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, it's kind of great timing for me for today's show anyway, because I wanted to for a while, if you remember I did my scroll saw chest set, I want the bottoms of those pieces to have flocking applied to them. But I was very skeptical of blasting flocking onto those pieces because they are so intricate and they do have all those little nooks and crannies. I worried about getting the adhesive uh, outside of the areas that I want it to. This is actually great timing for me because Spectro Coatings Corporation uh, has a different approach to flocking. So let's have a look at what I've got. So among the samples they sent me to test out and try was some of this stuff in varying colors. And this is a thick paper that has been pre-flocked on the front end. Um, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take this inside and, well, you know what, let's go in the office and I'll show you what I have in mind. Well, this is one of the finished chess pieces, and as I said, I want to add flocking to the bottom. It'll just give it a softer surface to slide along the board, as well as uh, just give it that extra finished look. So the first thing that I'm going to need is the dimension of the base of each of these pieces, and they're all the same, and they're all an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So I don't want to cut just squares of flocking. My idea of what I would like to have on the bottom of these are circles. So normally with traditional uh, styles of flocking, that circle would be very difficult to get and get it crisp and clean. Uh, even with masking, I think it may be troublesome. But I want to try to use some of this pre-flocked paper that was sent to me. And my idea is that I would like to use this light color here on the dark chest pieces and use the darker color on the light chest pieces. Now there's several different ways that I could cut this and you know you could use an X-Acto knife if you wanted, you could use scissors if you wanted, um, but for me I'm lucky enough that my wife has and lets me use her Cricut cutter. So why don't we start with that and um, we'll go through the process of how I'm going to get this cut out. I want to try to cut it on the Cricut cutter and see how it works. Well, I know that I've shown you guys things on the Cricut design space before, but I wanted to show you how quick and easy a project like this can be. So I'm just going to open up the Cricut design space here and the first thing you want to do is click on New Project. Now, these chess pieces are an inch and a half square. I want a round uh, bit of flocking on them, but I want to leave a little bit of space around the perimeter. So I think I'm going to make each one an inch and a quarter in diameter. So this is one of the simplest projects to do on here, not like some of the other ones we've done on here, but you just want to go into shapes, 
and click the circle and the design space will automatically add a circle there. Now this circle, if you highlight it, you can see it's 3.111 inches and 3.111 inches. Well, we said that we wanted them at an inch and a quarter. So all you need to do is come up here to your size because the lock is locked, it will keep its configuration so that you're not changing the width and the height at different ratios. It'll keep its aspect ratio. So you can just double click here and we will put in 1.25 inches and hit enter. And there we go, an inch and a quarter circle. Now we know that we need 16 of these per side of the chess pieces. So all we need to do here is right click on this. We can copy it. And then just by hitting Command V, we can get 16 copies of this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'm gonna do a couple extra in case I screw up. So at this point now, all you want to do, we know that our paper that was provided is 12 inches by 12 inches. So you can use the scale on here to lay out our circles to try to uh, eliminate as much of the waste as you can. Try to get it as tight as you can in there. You don't want to get it too tight because you want to give it room to cut. So either way, we'll get these circles lined up here, all 18 of them in our case, because I have two extras. And then from there, I'll show you what you want to do after that. And once you get them all laid out like this, all you need to do is highlight them just like this. You can highlight them all. And then you want to click group right up here in the top right corner and then come down here and click attach. Now at this point, this is all one big pattern. You can move it around however you like, you can shift it, but it is all one piece. So you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting one of your little circles. So at this point now, I'm going to save it. So we'll just click save and well, what can we say? We, we'll call it chess pieces. There we go. So we'll just click save and that way if something should mess up, I'm not going to lose my project. So all you need to do in order to make this project once you have your machine set up is click make it. Now from here, this will sort the mats. It'll do everything you need. You want to check right here. Sometimes this is showing you how it's going to cut, but sometimes depending on your design, it may drop this down or move it around to try to optimize the space. You want to just make sure that this is set where you want it to, to try to waste the least amount of material. So at this point now, we can just click continue. And we can see here that it's connecting to our Cricut machine. And there it is, it's connected and it wants us to load our material. So that's what we need to do now. We need to set up our mat. So in order to prep our mat, we will just take our 12 by 12 sheet of flocked paper, line it up here where we want it. and then just gently press it down. Well, let's go this way. And all you need to do is load it into the Cricut machine, place it up against the rollers, your mat, and then press the load button. The instructions are all on the screen. It tells you what to do. So let's press this. And once you're happy with it, you can just press the cut it button. So this is a big experiment now. I don't know if this is going to work very well. I've never worked with this material. Uh, I don't know if the Cricut machine will cut it. Hopefully it's going to work out and we'll end up with 16 and or in my case 18 with two extras. 18 spectacularly perfectly round flocked circles. I guess we'll see you in a bit when this is done.
And now that that's done, you just press the eject button and there's our dark ones cut. Well, let's see how they turned out. And as we peel our flocking paper off of here, you can see it, I did a great job. It's uh, nicely cut and we have 18 perfect circles. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this off the mat and get these all pulled out of here. And then I will do the same thing with the lighter color, uh, lighter color flocked paper. And then uh, I guess after that, we can head out to the shop and start attaching these to our chess pieces. So here I have all of my cut circles of flocked paper. And what I want to do now is adhere them to the bottom of each one of my chess pieces. I want to put the darker ones on the light pieces and the lighter ones on the dark pieces. But how am I going to adhere them? Well, what I'm going to try to do is use some spray adhesive. Now, normally with this stuff, um, if you want to get a temporary bond, like with a scroll saw pattern, you would spray it on your pattern, allow it to tack up for three to five minutes, and then rub it down on your wood, and then it is removable. But if you want what they call a permanent bond, um, you need to spray your circles and then apply them within 15 seconds of spraying them. So what I'm going to do is do them in small batches, spray them and adhere them to the bottom of our chess pieces. Well, one suggestion that I would give you, and it's from personal experience here, don't just spray these things without taking some kind of measures to tack them down. So I'm just going to use a little rolled up piece of masking tape on the backs of each one of these uh, pieces that I'm spraying because if not, the force of the spray will blow them everywhere and then you end up with one heck of a mess. So use something, preferably masking tape, to tack them down. And once you get them sprayed, we can peel them off of our paper here, lay them carefully onto our pieces center them as best we can, give them a little press to fit them in place. Okay, and now you want to let that set up now for an hour. These things have to sit for an hour with spray adhesive to get that bond. So I'm going to finish these up and I'll see you when I get them done. And there we have the first six done. Now something I will point out, don't spray more than you can adhere in that 15 seconds. I did six here. It may have been a little too many. I'm going to do them three at a time just to get the better adhesion. So I'm going to carry on gluing all of these uh, flocked pads into place. And uh, well, I guess I'll see you at the end. Okay, so <laughs> this is awesome. This just screams professionalism. I love the clean lines. I love the clean look of it. I don't care who you are or how good you think you are, myself included in that list, there is no way I could have got clean, professional looking lines like this by using traditional flocking methods, not here in a home shop. Um, I'm very pleased with these results. This is fantastic. One thing I will point out, um, if you have some kind of a pick or even an awl or a center punch or something like that, a bent uh, paper clip, anything, when those circles or your little pads are taped down, it's great to have something like this that you can hook up the one edge so you can grab it and then use the hook to hold down your paper and peel back your little circle. Just a little tip for you to make things easier, but honest to goodness, that is beyond spectacular. That is beyond professional. I absolutely love that. And there you have it pre-flock sheets to flock the bottoms of my chess pieces. Guys, um, this stuff here, you know what? It's spectacular. It really is. Um, I wasn't sure at first, and I'm always not sure when I try a new product. Um, you never know what you're going to get into. And of course, every company thinks that their product is fantastic. And why wouldn't they? You know what? It's their product. Be proud of what you make. So you have to go in kind of being a little skeptical. But this stuff pretty much from the get-go blew my skepticism right out of the water. Um, 
the biggest thing here for me is the lack of the mess. I absolutely hate finishing projects. I'm pretty sure you guys know that from previous uh, viewings of my show. I don't like applying finishes, so the easier the better. And as much as I love the results that flocking provides, I'm not a big fan of the adhesive. For, for starters, it is it smells like there's no tomorrow. It's got a very strong odor because it's a petroleum-based product. So you have to have solvents to clean it. The odors are horrible. You have to be in a ventilated area. You have to wear a dust mask when you're spraying or applying the flocking powder because the stuff is so fine and becomes so airborne that it's very easy to suck it into your respiratory system. You could be blowing your nose red for the next four days or blue or whatever color flocking you were using. This stuff from Spectro is mess free. It really is. It's so easy to cut whether you want to use, say, an X-Acto blade or a pair of scissors or, or what have you. Um, it's just wonderful. For me, I was lucky enough to use my wife's Cricut machine and got those circles perfect. So they look very professional. The whole thing just added the next level to my project. The colors look great. I like the way that I took the lighter color on the darker wood and the darker color on the lighter wood. So not only do I have contrast on the pieces between the walnut and the maple pieces, but I also have contrast between the flocking and the pieces with the dark flocking on a lighter wood and the lighter fl flocking on a darker wood. I see a lot of possibilities for this stuff, guys. I'm hoping that we're gonna see this product experimented a lot more in the upcoming shows. I've got some ideas that I want to play around with. Some might work, some might not, but that's what the show is all about. A little bit of experimenting. And, you know, honestly, this stuff so far, I like what I see. Guys, if you are interested in getting yourself some of the, this material, Spectro has an Etsy uh, page where they sell this to, to, the, to the consumer. Um, normally, I believe they are an industrial application, but they do have the Etsy page for people who wish to get some for home use, for crafters and that sort of thing. Um, they have provided me with a discount code. I will also have that below. If you use that discount code when placing your order, uh, they will provide you with a 30% discount off your order. So feel free to order from them. Use the discount code. They'll know you saw it here on my show. I don't get anything for it, guys. Don't think it's one of those deals. Um, they provided me with the samples, and that's as far as our deal went. So that's all there is to it. I get nothing, but what you get is a 30% discount. So take it and enjoy it. If you want to get these products to use in your shop, whether it be for putting on the bottom of uh, coasters or boxes or lining boxes or whatever you want to do with it, this is the opportunity to do it, and 30% discount is a great way to start off with it. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell, and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. We have a lot of fun here on the program. I hope that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope you've enjoyed what I brought you. I hope that you're going to try this stuff because so far I really like it. And honestly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.